Hello again, SEC viewers, sports producer Davis Kyler joining you yet again with another Fab Four update. This time I am joined by Aaron Forsythe, the activities director at Matamidi High School. Aaron, thank you so much for being with me. Hey, thank you, David. I, uh, um, I'm happy to connect with you, uh, and it's, it's good to be talking to people. Oh, I feel that. I definitely feel that. So how have things been going for you personally for the last month or so? Uh, it's, it's been interesting, you know, just like everyone, um, you know, those, uh, new challenges and nuances of, of finding a rhythm at, at home, um, and sometimes feeling <laughs> inadequate as a parent, uh, it, it's been interesting teaching, a, a kindergartner and a second grader. We got, uh, two daughters at home and very thankful for the support we've had from the teaching staff at Wildwood Elementary. Um, and also very grateful for the work they do with our kids. Um, we're, our, our daughters are excited to get back at school hopefully next fall, and uh, my wife and I are very excited for the kids to get back to school next fall. Yeah, major props to you and all of the teachers because I don't have any kids, and I can only imagine what suddenly teaching at home is, is like. So major props to you for being able to go through that. So what is, what is a typical work day? like for you? Has it been a big adjustment from before to how things are now in quarantine? Yeah, um, the, the challenges, you know, that I didn't foresee, and I don't know if any of us really did, is uh, just how uh, difficult it can be to, to be efficient um, remotely. Um, uh, we come in, we have a rotation here at Matamita High School, we come in uh, one day a week and uh, Wednesday Saturday, 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 this, uh, this week time we're recording. Um, it's been interesting, you know, a lot of, of Google Hangout meets and, and Zoom meetings, um, and you, you can get a lot of things done, but you start to realize that there's some things you just have to be on site for. So that, that has been interesting and, and part of the learning curve. And along with all the hard work that Mata Mita has been doing and that every school has been doing, it's been really awesome to see the creativity from people to find fun things to do going through this. Uh, on that note, Mata Mita Activities tweeted a few days ago, the Minnesota Principal AD 2020 Challenge. What is that <laughs> and how did it come about? Yeah, so uh, our wrestling coach, Mr. Matt Oswald, um, came across that and um, gave our principal, Kathy Nickleby, a nudge and myself a nudge. And uh, just uh, one more thing with the Be The Light Minnesota campaign, we turn on our lights for 20 minutes and 20 seconds on Monday nights at 8.32 for uh, first and foremost, our, our class of 2020, our seniors, but uh, all of our students, families, uh, Just it's just a symbolic gesture, letting everyone know that we're thinking of our, our students, our families, and everyone impacted. Um, the Principal AD Challenge was uh, a way to um, have our principals uh, just show that we're, we're not forgetting. And in fact, our, our senior class is on the forefront of our minds. So uh, most of the principals here went up and ran 20, 20 yard dashes on Monday night. Uh, again, just a symbolic gesture, um, and uh, it was interesting. It was it was fun. Okay, I said it was fun before, but maybe that sounds a little difficult. But still, props to you guys for showing the dedication to reminding the seniors that you're still out there doing the best you can and, work, and working hard, because it sounds tremendously like a lot of work. Um, and it's no secret that everybody's wondering about sports. Uh, how is this situation going to affect summer camps and maybe even the fall sports? Is there is there any planning you've been able to do in regards to those? Yeah, you know, so the State High School League has uh, their lead network. Uh, they, where they connect with ADs statewide once a week. Um, and their board has adjusted that summer contact window, uh, still starting on June 1st for the time being, um, and has been extended uh, to August 7th. So usually that ends the last day of July. So they've extended that seven days on the back end and they've also opened up four more days uh, 
which over which is typically the the Fourth of July blackout week. So now that Fourth of July blackout date is just the third, fourth, and fifth. Um, so they've extended that. There's more time available for our student athletes to have contact with our coaching staffs in the summer. Now all of that, we we realize now we've become accustomed to to the fluidity in which things change uh, under COVID-19. So things could change before June 1st. Um, we'll see what happens. We're pre we're preparing like things are going to start June 1st. Um, because it's, it's easier to dial it back uh, as we get closer to that date. You know, our summer strength and conditioning program, Coach Gary and Oswald, they're, they're already um, looking at, at different options, entertaining different ways we can um, have our student athletes stay fit and, and train over the summer. Um, you know, it could be a lot of focus on body weight, core strength, band workouts. Um, could be, uh, well, we're planning on moving everything outside. So um, we won't be, we don't plan on being inside in our, our weight room in June for sure. Um, and again, the name of the game right now is being flexible and making sure we're providing the best opportunities we can for our kids and our families that we're serving. And um, there's just a lot of contingency planning taking place right now. And when all of this is over and things get back, hopefully, as I mentioned, sooner rather than later, uh, what are you most looking forward to being able to do uh, when you get back to your job being normal? Yeah, I, I can tell you, I'm, I hope I, I, I will never take anything for granted again. <laughs> and uh, we cannot underestimate how valuable face-to-face -face contact is. It is, um, it's irreplaceable. And uh, it's the funny thing is, is I, I miss the games. I miss seeing our kids compete. But what I'm really looking forward to that first day back is, is um, being in our commons at 740, 730 in the morning and, and watching our kids file into the building. And those, those interactions, those small interactions, um, uh, passing conversations that's what I'm looking forward to the most and um, yeah I I can't wait for that day to get back yeah and I think you speak for everyone when when you say that and, and you certainly speak for me uh, it's just those those interactions I mean I, it's it's weird to think about right where how things are now versus just having face-to-face -face conversations and seeing the students it's it's weird times for certain, but I'm looking forward to it right along with you, especially as the sports producer. Yep, absolutely. Well, Aaron, I, I hope you get the chance to have those interactions real soon. I hope you see the students again and the other fellow teachers real soon. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, best of luck on the rest of the spring school year and uh, forward into the summer and the fall. All right, thank you, David, you take care. Yeah, you too, likewise.